All right, this is a follow-up to my previous video where I test out some GPUs, but I identified the CPU as the limit, especially when ray tracing. But I was on a very high-end CPU, and I didn't have time in that video to try out some other CPUs. So what are you looking at right now? Well, right now you see me running around Hogsmeade, and we're getting under 60 FPS much of the time. I'm going to restart an average, uh, average benchmark run here. Um, and what is this? Well, we're running on an Intel i5-9600K, so a mid-range Intel CPU from, what was it, 2018, 2019, about around there. And you can see that I am, again, below 60 FPS in Hogsmeade, and you can see all the CPU cores. This is a six-core, six-thread CPU, and I'm displaying all of them. And you can see, well, they're not all 100% maxed out. There's often at least one thread showing um, over 80% utilization, which is telling me that it is limited by a single thread in, in the overall performance here. That's why we're not able to do better. The GPU is not the problem here. If you look at the GPU, we're at around 50%, between 40 and 50% GPU utilization. So the GPU here is capable of much, much more. I'll go ahead and show you where we're at here. Uh, so currently this, well, I'm on a 4K monitor and this doesn't have exclusive full screen. It's just not an option. Uh, so I'm, but I'm still rendering at 1080p from there. And then um, we have the RTX 4070 Ti. So the 4070 Ti is about as powerful as an RTX 3090 in most situations. So this is a very high-end uh, GPU for this system. We're running at um, ultra settings, but with ray tracing turned off. And so this is just how demanding it is even without ray tracing on a reasonable mid-range gaming CPU from just a few years ago. Now, there are definitely other areas of the game that are not this demanding, um, but I was also curious in this area if there was much we could do. So I'm gonna reset the average counter and you can see the average, the current FPS is the one on the left. The average is the one uh, in the middle after the, the frame time in milliseconds. The one on the right is the 1% lows. So you can see it running up and down this street a few times. Uh, we're kind of averaging in the lower 50s range. Let's get a little more data here because what I'm gonna do is see if there's anything we can do in the game settings um, to try to get closer to a 60 FPS because while most graphic settings um, affect the GPU, some do affect the CPU. So we were at a 51 FPS average there. Let's see if there's anything we can do in the graphic settings to help us out. So if we go to the graphic settings, you notice that effects quality says it impacts the CPU and GPU. So I'm just gonna see if we turn anything that impacts both CPU and GPU to low, if it does much for us. Now, ray tracing has a huge impact on the CPU, but we're not touching that yet. Uh, population quality does impact CPU performance, so we're gonna go down to low there. And view distance can also impact CPU performance, so we're go gonna go down to low here. Nothing else here is anything that I, I think has much impact on the CPU. So I've turned down the relevant uh, CPU impacting options. We're gonna reset the average frame rate counter, and we're gonna run up and down the street uh, a few more times and see if we do any better at all. Uh, it is looking a little bit better, but maybe not a lot better. It does look like our average is now coming out uh, actually right around 60 FPS, which is nice, but it's, you know, <laughs> not perfect. Anyway, so I, I've got to say the CPU limitation, especially in Hogsmeade, right? There's other areas of the game where it's not nearly this bad. But the CPU limitation here on a, a decent mid-range gaming CPU from not too long ago, we are able to get up to 60 FPS average, although we're still dipping well below that, and the 1% lows here are significantly below that. Uh, also, I'm on a 16 gigabyte RAM system now because I was curious how, how the game would run with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So we can see that by turning everything way down that seems to have a CPU impact, we can, we can definitely help. Uh, but things certainly aren't great, and it's also annoying to be able to, to have to turn all of those way down just to kind of average around 60 and still dip below it. Now I'm going to turn on ray tracing and show you just how demanding ray tracing is. I'll need to restart the game. I'll edit that bit out of the video. Oh wait, restarted the game, went through the shader compilation again, all of that. This is now with ray tracing enabled. And now look at this. So ray tracing, everyone knows, has a big hit on the GPU. 
But my GPU here is still reporting uh, below 50% utilization. The 4070 Ti is good enough at ray tracing um, that ray tracing at 1080p with these settings at this frame rate is not maxing it out. The limiting factor here is, once again, the CPU. And if you look at the frame rate here, we're now down in the mid 30s. The average we're getting here is about 35 FPS on this run up and down. And so what we're seeing here is that there is a massive impact to the CPU performance when enabling ray tracing in this game. And so even if you have a GPU that is capable of ray tracing, I think that the optimized settings here in this game for ray tracing is just to turn them off, unless you have just an incredibly fast CPU. Um, because even my 7700X was struggling to hit 60 FPS in Hogsmeade with ray tracing enabled in this game. So, so if you're um, trying to use ray tracing, I mean, we could try out turning down the ray tracing settings to low and see if that does much for us. So far, all three settings, reflection, shadows, ambient, occlusion are still on, but we've set it down to low. I'm gonna reset my frame rate counter. And we're gonna see if we do any better here. I mean, if it's better, it's not by much. I still don't think most people would be targeting um, this type of frame rate. Wow, we just dipped. Um, wow, we're crashing hard. I almost wonder if I need to restart the game. Uh, <laughs> well, it's starting to settle out here a little bit. Okay. Yeah, frame time graphs all over the place. Uh, it's possible we're, we're starting to run into some VRAM issues. This is a 12 gigabyte card, but you can see it's trying to use at least 10 gigabytes, and some of that could be spilling over into system RAM. And this is only a 16 gigabyte system. It seems to have settled out a bit here into the mid 30s, but wow. Yeah, uh, so that's another thing is the VRAM and RAM uh, uh, demands on this game are quite a bit as well. But I think we can see here, there's not a lot we can do with ray tracing enabled to rein in the CPU side of things. What if we only tried ray traced shadows just to see if, if only ray traced shadows are on and it's only at low, if that's still having such a high demand on the CPU. So I'm gonna reset the frame rate counter again at these settings. And yeah, it's still looking like the CPU is gonna be nowhere near 60 FPS. So I think for optimizing the settings, I've gotta say, just turn ray tracing off. If you have one of the fastest CPUs in the world, you might consider using it, but, <laughs> um, or maybe if you're using frame generation to kind of get around that limit on one of the 4000 series cards, that kind of a thing. Okay, so the next thing I wanna look at is how would a bit of a newer um, CPU do? So I'm gonna hop over to a Ryzen 5000 based system and see what kind of CPU performance we get there. All right, now we've moved to a different system. This is a Ryzen 5000 base, specifically R9-5950X. Now that whole generation starting with the 5600 and up should have very similar gaming performance unless the game can actually utilize more than six cores and six threads. Uh, this has the um, eight, uh, sorry 16 cores and 32 threads, which is why you see such a mess of CPU data here. We did manage to make it all fit on the screen at least. And this is now on an RTX 4080. And the game, again, testing out the same area, we're looking at the average FPS, we're getting in the mid 70s, but definitely dipping below that. And you can see that the game is definitely not capable of utilizing 32 threads. That's typical, games are very hard to parallel parallelize um, that much. So that's pretty normal. You can look at some of the threads bouncing around to pretty high usage, and we're definitely in a uh, CPU limited scenario here because the GPU utilization is only in the mid 50s up into the 60% range. Now what are our actual graphic settings? Again it's an RTX 4080. I'm playing on a 4K screen but rendering the game at 1080p. Currently no upscaling, no, um, uh, no FSR or DLSS, any of that. It's RTX 4080. We're at the ultra settings and again, ray tracing off. So my point here is that if you're on a newer CPU compared to the uh, 9600K, here I'll reset the averages now that we're out of the menu, uh, but compared to the 9600K that we were at before, um, 
so in other words, a Ryzen 5000 based system, even in Hogsmeade, which is about as demanding as it gets, certainly can play the game over 60 FPS. Um, this system, the RAM, by the way, is 32 gigabytes of DDR4, 3600 CL16 memory, and that can affect the CPU performance as well. So pretty fast kit, and we've got a lot of it, um, but not, you know, as, as fast as you could go on a DDR4 based system. Anyway, um, what I want to look at next here is what the, C what the ray tracing performance is on a Ryzen 5000 CPU. So let's go ahead and kick that on. And I'll have to restart the game for this to actually go into effect. All right, um, so I've switched on ray tracing and we're still on the same system. It's still rendering at 1080p on an RTX 4080 in order to emphasize the CPU, right? We're trying to intentionally not be GPU limited in order to see um, how far the CPU can go. So it's looking like running around Hogsmeade with ray tracing enabled, um, we are not able to stay at 60 FPS. It's looking like we're averaging around 49 in this area. Now, once again, I want to repeat that Hogsmeade is particularly CPU demanding. Other areas of the game are going to perform significantly better. But I did want to emphasize that in a more CPU demanding area of this game, with ray tracing enabled, no matter how fast your GPU is on a Ryzen 5000 based system, you will not be staying over 60 FPS. Now, this is certainly not unplayable, but I think this is going to emphasize that my Optimize settings for this game on anything other than the fastest CPU in the world, maybe a 13900K, is probably going to be to just leave ray tracing off. Now, we could once again um, play around with settings a little bit here. So, again, and just to show you here, this is the 4080, and this is with uh, ray tracing on at the ultra settings. And I will mention that if you are on an RTX 4000 based system, you are able to enable um, the uh, frame generation if you do. Okay, I actually identified the issue. Uh, so by turning on DLSS, it was no longer rendering at 1080p. It went back to native 4K, which was why the performance wasn't boosting when we actually turned on frame generation. Long story short, if I'm going to do it this way, I'm going to have to use DLSS performance to render the game at 1080p and then upscale. So it's not quite apples to apples what we're doing, but anyway, frame generation on, what I want to emphasize is that the frame rate will improve dramatically using this. Um, it's gonna, in a CPU limited situation, almost double. So you can see we're now um, around 100 frames per second. Um, but then I do wanna mention that while this improves the motion fluidity, these frames that, that get generated are not interactive. The game engine is unaware of them. That's why the CPU um, isn't required and why it can help here. It doesn't improve the responsiveness of the game, is I guess what I'm trying to say. Now, I don't have my PC latency counter up here. Look at my other video if you want a more in-depth discussion of that. But I will say that um, if you want to use ray tracing in this game and you have a 4000 series RTX card, I do think that frame generation is going to be the only way to get a decent frame rate. Also, if you're thinking that your CPU is way performing better than mine, uh, this game can glitch out and apply frame generation without actually telling you it's applying frame generation. Um, so to, to ensure that it's actually off, you would want to turn it on and then back off again manually just to be sure. Anyway, so I wanted to mention um, this trick if you have a 4000 series card. Um, the frame generation is probably going to be the only way to get decent uh, ray tracing performance here. Now, I want to go back to my um, Ryzen 7000 based system. All right, we're now on the RTX 4090, but once again rendering at 1080p. Uh, but this time we're on the uh, Ryzen 7 7700X CPU paired with DDR5 6000 CL36 memory. So the memory timings could get a little tighter there, but pretty fast uh, RAM. And what I wanted to show here is the uh, CPU performance again. So running around Hogsmeade, this is with ray tracing off, but 1080p Ultra. And again, 1080p, not because that's realistic for a 4090, but because we're trying to show the limits on the CPU, not the limits on the GPU. Um, 
we can see that the Ryzen 7 7700X is able to average around 90 FPS in this uh, extremely demanding Hogsmeade scenario. Now, I wanna show you once again that ray tracing will crush the uh, CPU pretty badly, even on an extremely powerful CPU like this one. So let's go ahead and show you, first of all, the settings I was at here so you can see them all. Um, there it is, RTX 4090. And here was the ultra settings, ray tracing off. I'm now gonna kick it on for the sake of comparison and restart the video. All right, now with ray tracing enabled and running through the city here, um, setting my frame rate counter to the averages, we're going to be averaging around 60 frames per second with the ray tracing enabled. So again, this is not GPU limited. This is seeing the limits of the CPU RAM combo here. And again, it's frustrating that none of the CPU cores seem to be anywhere near 100%. We do see some get to around 60% or so, even 70%. So I still think it's a CPU limit, but I can't help but wonder if there's something um, unoptimized about the, um, maybe how the memory bandwidth gets utilized, something like that. I don't know. But this is also not completely uncommon in Unreal Engine 4 games when enabling ray tracing. It doesn't seem to scale well on the CPU. And uh, I saw similar results in Callisto Protocol. Uh, you know, Witcher 3 ray tracing update, that's not uh, Unreal Engine 4, but um, you see a similar uh, CPU limitation even on high-end CPUs when hitting the ray tracing. So obviously I could kick on the... Um, frame generation here because I'm on a 4090, but that's not really the point. I'm trying to show how good is the CPU here. You're capable of about 60 FPS with dips below uh, when using ray tracing um, on a Ryzen 7000 series CPU, it's looking like. Now again, other areas of the game are gonna be a lot easier to run. The last performance issue I wanna address here real quick is the VRAM. So right now you're seeing a 3060 versus a 3060 Ti at the same settings, this is 1440p Ultra, and the 3060 Ti should be the faster card. And now it's coming back to being a little bit about the same, and then it pulls up a little bit faster again. And this is, I think, a VRAM spillover because the 3060 has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, the 3060 Ti has eight. So just be careful when you're setting the, the GPU settings um, that you choose settings that aren't spilling over on the VRAM. Now, one option to help control that is um, upscaling the game. So if you're using DLSS, FSR2, something like that, that will, by lowering the rendering resolution of the game, it will help you um, rein in some of the VRAM requirements. Other settings are like textures, things like that. Uh, anyway, this isn't this video is focused more on the CPU, but I did just want to mention that the uh, the VRAM requirements here can be quite high. Ray tracing goes even further. Uh, so other than that, though, I think the GPUs actually don't perform that badly. Um, uh, running the game at ultra settings with no ray tracing, as long as you're within your VRAM budget, uh, is fine. And I was even able to get a GTX 1060 running at 60 FPS at 1080p medium with FSR2 quality upscaling. Um, but people on a GPU that old are likely running into CPU and RAM limitations. And again, the RAM usage is also quite high. So if you're under 16 gigabytes of RAM, and even at 16 gigabytes, you might be running into some issues. Anyway, I gotta go. I got some other things to do today. I hope all of you have an excellent day. Huge thank you to subscribers and channel members and all of that. And yeah, have an excellent day.